bloody love that sitting around in silence for the start of this show. <laughs> Here we are, back chat. It's actually our last episode of the year, Dan. 100%. It is. Oh, my gosh. Yes. We've been talking about it for a while, and so now it's actually saved, here. We've saved the best to last. You yeah, can bloody have. say that. <laughs> and Gov's coming here, too. Now, Jerry McGovern joins us for back chat. Finally, mate. Good sure to see right. you. Finally. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad you saved me for last. Yes, correct. Yeah. Now, we asked the same question to all of our guests, the very first question. We know you're all Australian. We know you're a premiership player. We know you've captained the club, right? You've done yeah. a lot of things on the footy field, and that's great. Be here to tell you. Do not care. We don't care just now. We do, but right. we'll get into that a little bit later. <laughs> I want to ask you first up, your greatest sporting achievement not on the football field. Now, I know you're asking yourself, what is this trophy right here, Dan? We haven't you spoken haven't, about it much before. No, we haven't. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll bring it up just for those who don't know about it. Cricket trophy, 5 for 16 in a grand final. That's the ball. Um, when so you were like an adult? or. Um, doesn't matter. Age is irrelevant. Under 12s. Under 12s, yeah. Chew Hill Cricket Club. Um, I was the under yep. nine state uh, hurdling champion, uh, 80 metre hurdles. Watch out. Under nine. So the hurdles were about our ankle height. You were just running, basically. I actually drew. <laughs> I, never was, I drew. Like, got, like, we both got a gold. Drew. Couldn't split us. Anyway, oh. we're padding for you. The greatest sporting achievement not on the football field. We don't care about your footy ability. What have you done oh. off the football field? In sport, um, like Sean McManus was a um, champion pigeon. Yeah, he was a pigeon racer, and he was one of the no, state wasn't. champion pigeon racer. Well, I don't reckon I'm going to top that. Um, I, mate, I used to love basketball. I, I was I was okay at basketball. Um, state I played. Player. Yeah, I did. Yeah, country state. So not. I oh know. Yeah, no, it's country state in the end. So they did a, obviously metro state. Mm. So everyone real, in WA, state. and then there's actually. The country kids that everyone forgets about. Right. I was I was in that crew. What, what position um, did you play? Bench. <laughs> 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 um, no, I was small back then, so I was just um, yeah, I was I was I was a fill in, I reckon. But um, no, nah, greatest treat achievement, I reckon. I used to do fire brigade. Has everyone seen fire brigade for no, actual? Never that? heard of it. What is it? It's not. It's like the fire. I get ah. Uh, it, it's it's it was called fire brigade. I used to do it in Kalgoorlie. Um, and when I went moved to Albany, I was hoping they did it, but no one sort of knew what it was. What is it? It's it's a race of obviously you start in the line, two or four or single. Um, you you run out, throw a fire hydrant in. You do dry or wet. So <sighs> wet is connect the hoses as quick as you can, right. shoot the target. Dry is connect the hose as soon as you can, pick the to pretend to shoot the target, and you go through. I've and seen finish. this on Google. They like do the, the races up the ladders and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that all that. So I wasn't at the ladder oh, stage. I was right. in a young pup, but it was like start, hit the hydrant, run, grab it, connect, connect hoses, and get through the. What's end. called Fiber yeah. Gate? It was just called Fiber Gate. That's what I was. Right. It was um, look it up. I, I used to exactly love, mate. Yeah, I, 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 if I can get a photo, I'll get a photo for you because um, <laughs> you it was so fun. No, we just like that was how we just had to wear like a plain white kit oh, and rocked up. We did a that was the first time I ever went away bus trips and all that sort of Fire stuff with my that's mates. Good. Yeah, like it was that. random, mate. I used to go to Meriden, random joints out of around Kalgoorlie, but that sums up Kalgoorlie really. There's not much to do. Well, 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 one more to come at you yeah, before. Have you, have, do you think you've sort of more recently lost touch with the common man a bit? Yeah, because um. Apparently you don't go around to BP Padbury anymore where my dad works. He's like, mate, <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while. The only it's reason is a big that, shot now doesn't go to. There's Padbury. only reason for that is I've moved suburbs. And R- do you know which, what? To where? Which, which do you know I'm who he's now. talking about? Dino at BP Padbury. I know, like, I know the exact Padbury. So that's his dad. Is that your old man? Yeah, Dino. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go back. Boy. I'm leaving here. I'm going straight there. <laughs> I, and he, giving Dino a big hug. He's saying, he, sorry, mate. Yeah, please. He was at, he was at my house. We got the kids while I'm here. And he said, tell him. So like it was straight up telling he's lost touch yeah we well just all you need doesn't to, come around no you more. just need to tell him to cut his fuel prices back because they're so expensive <laughs> up there at the moment do but they set them no nah, oh, nah, not, not anymore who knows but no nah, I've, I've i've lost a little bit of touch of pabri on and i'm and it flattens me a bit because i love that suburb yeah. all right let's okay. pull it right back then let's go <laughs> let's go all the way back growing up right so um you said you were small when you were growing up but small you grew up, you, you didn't grow up in perth did you Tell, uh, tell us a bit about your childhood. You've nah. travelled. You lived in remote communities. Yeah, I, I've moved around a bit of a gypsy, I guess a bit. Um, I was born in Sydney and then moved. Dad was playing for Sydney. You're a New, you're a New South Welshman. Yeah, mate. Yeah, Holy I'm a bra boy. Shit. I was born in Roo. <laughs> wow. So um, yeah, uh, yeah. Grew up, I grew up for two years there, so I didn't really wow. remember much of that at all. I didn't remember a thing actually. But uh, yeah, then Dad moved over to Perth. Played for Freo. We lived in Port Kennedy down um, near Rockingham Way. Yep. And then dad obviously f- finished footy up um, and we, it was random um, as we just end up going into a, um indigenous community. Warburton? Warburton, yep. 
Good, well done, Scoey. Warburton. Um, <laughs> in the, it's literally in the middle of night. It's just like right on the border borderline of Alice Springs. How and many people? Oh, only a, a couple of thousand. Like the right. The actual community we're in would have just fluctuated from a couple of hundred to maximum a couple of thousand, oh, if that. Yeah. Uh, really small. Um, and then yeah, I lived there for four or five years, and then from there. Mooched on down to Kalgoorlie. Did, did, before you Kalgoorlie, so how old were you when you were in um, Warburton? Uh, I would have been, I was eight. Um, my little brother was six. So you were sort of eight to 12. Yeah, I, eight Mitch, to... Mitch was there with you. Yeah, Mitch was there with us. Did so you what, play footy? Yeah, I tried. But <laughs> there was was it, a, it was all dirt. Like It was yeah. like red dirt, ovals. Um, bare feet. I wasn't bare feet, <laughs> but all the boys up there were. And um, I tried to play. And when I mean tried, like, I was... I was that kid that was just getting absolutely head jumped on. I was getting <laughs> flattened. I was like, so you were scully. I was like borderline <laughs> hated life. I was like, foot, dad, footy is the worst game ever because um, the boys up there was, have a serious talent. Eh? Like they, um, I really felt like that's so what I learned the sort of natural side of the game. Yeah, I've heard you speak about that a bit. Like, yeah, there's no coach. To, no to one, read the game. Yeah, the way the boys play, there's no, there's no coach. No one's telling you you can can't do this you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do this it's just free-flowing just it's craziness man it's it was um it was awesome um to watch it wasn't awesome to play because <laughs> i was an absolute battler but um true yeah. or false true or false you changed your name to rocky yeah yes i did i i did um and Legal, not like not because i just chose it um so up there up in the communities their, their law is if one of the elders pass away of significance and um senior elders with your name you you go kumana you called Kumana, yeah. um, which is like mate up there. So it's how are you, mate? Instead of how are you, Jeremy? Yeah, the, out of respect for the older, yeah. yeah. Um, and a guy up there named Jeremy Lawler died, and um, so I was there for two months, and I got dad got the tap on the shoulder and said, "Mate, you got to change your name." And I'm a young kid. I'm yes. thinking, "What do you mean? I'm changing me?" He said, "Mate, you explained it all to me. Sat me down and just said." What it, what, what it, how it goes up there, how it works, and um, obviously accept it straight away as a young fella. And I'm going, sweet. And he said, you can choose your name. I said, all right, what am I? Gave me a couple of days to choose it. And at that time, I loved Rocky Balboa. <laughs> <laughs> My old man was hammering me with Rocky Balboa films. So he said, what do you want to call yourself? I said, Rocky. So I was running around calling myself Rocky or Kumana. So, yeah, I wasn't known as Jeremy at all. The whole there. time up there? No, the whole time, crazy. yeah. Yeah, oh, so. That's in, cool. Yeah, I'll, I wish I kept it. Any other <laughs> names that, that you had as a as an option? No, oh, that was no, nah, no. Nah, it was pretty firmly rocky, rocky. for me <laughs> as um, a young kid. So yeah, like I've I've heard you speak about it a lot, like that indigenous culture. You know, you you were you weren't just living up there, sort of. You you were fully adopted into the yeah. way of life up there, right? Yeah, completely. So um, obviously we moved up. Dad was working up there, um, the running footy program, uh, for everyone at school. It was it was pretty much. The start of, I guess, the Clontarf program a little bit. It was a bit of a trial and Dad was up there to try and encourage kids to go to school uh, through netball or um, footy or sport. Uh, and it was, you come, at that stage, it was one day a month or something, something ridiculous. Yeah. And then if you come, you could represent your community in one of the desert dust-up comps that Dad created or helped create. Um, and then, yeah, when we moved up there, it was Dad was travelling around heaps. So we pretty much got adopted uh, by a bloke named Carnegie who was the son of the elder who pretty much run the whole community up there. Right. Um, and he was just looking after us the whole time. And when, we, yeah, it was, it was a bit eerie, like first going there. Cause it was the cultural difference was massive. Like I'm a privileged white person from Perth and I've, I've gone up into this indigenous community that is nothing like what yes. we've got here. Yes. Um, so yeah, there was a little deli like shop, I guess, where you just got your normal food from. We had to get every, two months you get a shipment from Woolies so you know two months yeah like every two months it wasn't much and you just get one big shipment coming it's like a 26 hour drive wow. on devil Oof. on desert roads and so <laughs> yeah we used to get all our food sent up every couple of months it was yeah it was a different way of living for sure but um yeah we got welcomed with open arms as long as we um we're being respectful and that was probably our biggest the hardest barrier for us is mm. trying not to step on any cultural um cultural barriers that we have and yeah. uh, different laws like the the police up there aren't police they're up there to speak to the elders um and the senior people in the community of what happens uh, and yeah. has how are things dealt with they don't intervene at all 
Right. So um, it was a completely dry community, so no alcohol. Um, yeah, there was a, there was a lot of lot of eerie eerie moments in it and and different things I've I've definitely seen out there. So cool. you moved from there, Kalgoorlie. Yeah. And then Albany. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, I call Albany home for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you say you're an Albany boy, but you're a New South Welshman, mate. Yeah, I'm a New South. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Well, I'm a must, mate. I don't know what I am. <laughs> um, but no, I love Albany's like my, my major childhood. Um, yeah, I, I grew up. All my best mates are from there, and uh, my missus, her family's all from there. So. I'm calling it right. So you move. Um, so Claremont is that's that's the region, Albany. Yeah. So when did you move from Albany up to cl- play uh, with Claremont? No, and as soon as I graduated, year uh, year twelve. Yeah. So did the old levers and carried on down in Dunsborough, and then uh, I come back and um, I remember crying actually on my bed because <laughs> I took, oh because you know you're going up to Perth and a young fellow, my family were down there. Yeah. And it was just like a it was just a big shock like it's just a big there it is you go and see you, mate go to Perth right. obviously my family supported me but it was just as a young kid I was like 17 leaving your mates I, yeah hadn't even turned 18 yet I had a couple of mates coming up with me which was great but um, you're still leaving all your mates friends, family everything you've grown up with um, and it was yeah ship you up come up to Perth and um, move in with a couple of senior uh, role models at, at Claremont nice. one of them is actually on our coaching list at the moment he's just Tommy Morrison I saw that Wow Yeah the big Medax so, um, so you live with him As a 7, 8, 8 year old He's now coaching the club Yeah he's like now coaching It's, it's so funny he's your coach worked. He was And you know what At the time He was the hardest Guy on me He was Mate if you want to get picked up I think you can play He was riding me on What I was eating Drinking Activity Everything I was doing And he was Pain in my ass But right. um, I respected him I loved him for it And then There are three Toms actually so Tom Morrison, Tom Ain't, and Tom Derricks. And Tommy Derricks obviously was at Richmond and yes. um, played there. So the School of Hard Knocks. Claire, yeah, the they, Claremont boarding house. They definitely opened my eyes to a lot of different things, those boys, and they, they were legends, man. They, Did they you play in a flag that year? Uh, not that year. I played in uh, 2011 Resi's flag and then 2012 League flag. So oh. I, I, I snuck into the three-peat. That, that Claremont side was never losing. <laughs> um, I, did, I feel like I did pretty well just to make the side. Um, those boys were... Yeah, there was no way they were losing. Because people think that you were, were picked up out of nowhere. You go in the 44th pick, 2011. Yeah, but you rookie play, draft. Yeah. yeah, rookie draft, right? So it's like, okay, so reserves, grand final, premiership. Yeah. Another premiership. Were you a forward? Were you a back? Were you a ruckman? My, was, my memory is you coming to the club <laughs> saying you wanted to play in the ruck. Oh, while I love Dean the Cox ruck, is mate. still going around. Yeah, <laughs> got, with Nick Nats coming through. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I love the ruck. Oh, I think ruck's the greatest position on the ground, but... Um, I'm not a ruckman. I'm not pretty. You can't play there. Yeah, I know it sucks. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I was a forward. Got drafted as a forward. I was, I was just sitting in the goal square down in Albany, and they just kick it inside fifty, and I'd mark it or pick it up. Kicked kick kick in the game. Uh, down in Albany. Yeah. Um, I reckon I, I didn't. Kick, I kicked nine goals, twelve one day. Nine goals, twelve. Yeah. So you, and I had so you my still can't kick. And goal. I had my brother's footy boots on. <laughs> Who, Mitch? Yeah. So me, and Mitch. You see, obviously, we yeah, brothers. You go go get your footy boots and whatever. I'd choose. I'd, it'd piss me off because he'd go. I'll get the same ones. <laughs> and I've grabbed his. They're exact identical. I didn't know. I was out of Denmark and I've <laughs> thrown my shoes on and I'm like, I can't, I can't get them. We're, we're about to play. Hadn't put them on, so I just had to squeeze my. Did he have smaller shoes than you? Yeah, small. He's two years younger than me. <laughs> oh, I reckon I was like a size eleven. I'm, I'm running around in nines, <laughs> and it was oh mate, it was. So but it reason? didn't didn't put me off. I had a blinder. Um, <laughs> Twelve behind. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm putting it down to. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I end up. That was yeah, that was probably the biggest I kicked. But I, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't kick too too many massive bags. My goals twelve is pretty big, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's decent. Yeah. 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 Um, not all smooth sailing though So you get to the footy club You're yep. a rookie um, Well documented sort of But I don't know how much people Have really heard you speak about it much Like you Is it the end of 2013? Were you uh, was tw- Yeah it was end of 2013 Going into 14 yeah So Simo's first year at the club? Yeah so all the stuff went down With Woosh obviously yep. Finishing up um, I it, just you got elevated a, you, had, you hadn't played a game? I hadn't played a game I, mate, I wasn't even close to it To be honest Like I was um, Just figuring out what position I was playing So I played Ruck in that Grand final that year, ruck and forward, yeah. and I think I, and I watched it the other day because we had the reunion. Um, watched it. I was playing on half back as well. East Perth. No, no, for Claremont in tw- 2012. Right. So I just played that year, and then I'd come back 13. Right. Started playing with East Perth. Broke my leg round three. I started to play really well. I think I was they were looking at elevating me that year. Huh. Uh, me and Cal Sinclair, I reckon. Um, and then right before I was about to get elevated, I was where we used to do the touch in the hand. So you'd 
And back then, you know, when we used to do it, Simon East would be booting these floaters in and you'd just, whoever what could hit it the hardest and take it in the hands the hardest, you know, it was a bit of a flex. Yeah. And I was going hard and I've put my hand down and just nicked the top of my hand and popped my knuckle through my skin. Oh. Uh, and Wush was right there. I was trying to impress Wush, of course. He was right there. And I grabbed him. He goes, you're right. And I, <laughs> it. And I said, oh, mate, I think you popped my finger out. And I just see Wush get, oh, shit. <laughs> Get up to the th- so I sprinted out. I had to get surgery, cleaned it out. Next day, Cal Sinclair gets elevated, and Wush goes, "Mate, we're considering you." But I sort of thought, "Oh, well, no worries. I'm oh. around the mark." That's after I broke my leg. Um, anyway, yeah. So that all happened. Played a couple of games back end of East Perth that year. Was promising. I was improving, I guess. Then got elevated. Simo come in. Um, I was actually training in the break. So I, because I'd had an interrupted season, they and they knew the type of person I was. Um, right, wasn't the best trainer or um, most diligent with everything. So they got me in uh, as soon as I finished the season. Trained for three weeks, uh, yeah. and I was training okay. And Simo rocked up, and I was the first player he seen. I thought, oh, I'm playing round one. How They're, good? Oh, how good is this? I'm training in the break, <laughs> playing round. Just been elevated. All the momentum's going my way. And then, um, funnily enough, I went went to Phuket. I shouldn't laugh about it, but I sort of do. Um, oh yeah, I went to Phuket for four weeks with a couple of my... <laughs> four weeks? <laughs> That's a big trip. <laughs> yeah, it was just under that or something. It was 20... Oh, something. Yeah, it was a, it was a long time. Mm. Uh, too long. Uh, and I didn't do a thing. Not one thing. Yeah. Um, I had the best off-season I've ever had. That was the greatest trip I've ever done in my life. But uh, come back and, yeah, it was it was bad. She was bad. Um, did I'll, you did you know you weren't in good shape? Because you got no, called to a meeting, mate. didn't you? Yeah, I was extremely naive. I, this is this was just the mindset thing of of myself. I played footy in the country, never done preseason. Just started to get into them obviously when I got drafted, um, and I enjoyed myself off the field way too much. Um, and I thought I could keep doing it. Uh, I wasn't really enjoying my footy at that stage either, because um, as, as a young rookie coming from a real low base, extremely unfit. Uh, a lot of my training was just running. Um, and not much footy work, which I love the game of footy, but um, it's not an excuse, but yeah. Mm. Didn't do anything, come back, and I was extremely nice. I thought I'd be all right, started running a couple of laps. Um, and then it was getting bad when we did one, one K, and I kept, so we did four one Ks, and we come back, just young boys, just trot, yep. nothing quick, sort of 4.35 minute pace. And I was held on, I think, oh, I'm, here we go, I'm going to get away with this. And then um, second one come around and I was... So the, I the was, first one you held on? I held on, so I, I, that was my thing, I didn't pace myself. <laughs> um, but no, I held on and then um, second one come around and I was really going, like it was getting real bad. And then Brady Rawlings come, started jogging with me and then Kof grabbed me and pulled me out. I thought, oh, he's pulling me out for a bit of load or something. I don't know, it must be going all right. I don't know. This is how stupid I was, I wasn't even thinking about it. Pulled me out, but then find out later. I got pulled into a meeting and they pulled me out because it was extremely embarrassing for the footy club and myself um, and everyone. So, Did you think you were walking into a meeting to tell you that it was embarrassing? No. So I'm thinking, oh, it's just the day one sort of meeting. Simo's trying to catch up their run and he's like, Gov, you're coming in first, catch up. And I walked in and as soon as I walked in, there was 15 different officials from the footy club there. You know, that's not good when you've got a lot Boy. of people in the room. Um and then Simo was sort of pacing around a bit. Volzo was there. Uh, and I sat down and, yeah, the shackles were off. I, I absolutely copped it, which I deserve, mate. I'd, I'd hunt, hand them, yeah, I, I deserved every bit of it. But and that was just from just from your form of running? or, the, or had you No, nah, like, just the shape I come back. Mate, I was eight kilos overweight. Right. Like, I was so significant. You could physically see it. Oh, yeah. And I, well, I'm not a natural runner. Um, mate, I, I literally... Completely fucked up or stuffed up. And so, no, you can swear. Um, and so they, they banished you from the club, didn't they? Yes. It's, uh, yeah, Simo pretty much, it was it was scary. Like, they were talking about ripping contracts up and stuff, which was fair enough at the stage. Like, I, I wasn't once pissed off at anyone except for myself because I knew I'd, I'd done it all myself and it was my fault. But, um, yeah, they were talking about cutting contracts up and um, everything else. And then Simo just sort of said, look, you can go away for three months. Uh, get fit and if you get fit then you can we'll consider bringing you back to train and see how you go but if not then you're done pretty much so um yeah i just obviously had a few tears on the way home in the in the car and <laughs> i'm not a big cry but for you, they got me going cried on the way to albany yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a massive cry deep, deep down <laughs> a closet cry had, um, did they know about the trip yeah i i think they did like I, yeah i was pretty honest with them like they 
even when I got drafted, like the day before, the, I was in Bali for a, for a week before the draft come through, and they called me and said, "I oh, can you come in for a meeting." And I didn't know I was going to get picked up. <laughs> and Trevor Woodhouse, like, man, how are you going to be been doing it running? I said, man, I haven't done a thing. I'm I'm going to be that but far behind. He goes, all right, no worries. We'll see if we'll consider you in the rookie draft. I said, no worries. I just got picked up. It was the same with Phuket. I was. They said, what happened? I said, man, I've done an hour of training. I've absolutely cooked it. Um, I think that's I sort of respected that in a way. I guess I was I was just putting my head put my hand up and and try to own it as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, it was get away, go. I was only on a little rookie wage back then on 22 grand a year or something. So I went and cleaned my bank account out and, and bought a bike. That was a, like that day. I just went and bought a bike. I saw the stuff. I'm going to ride everywhere. Um, rode from, what did I do? I rode, rode from Hillary's down to Frio. To, like, I would have done like 70, 80 Ks. And I just was just so angry at myself. That day. That day. Oh. And I had to run that next. So this is how stupid I am. Like this... Sums up a young naive kid has no idea about any, and I'm, I've could barely walk. You've gone from no riding a bike to riding <laughs> significant amount of k's <laughs> on, a, and I've got a mountain bike too. It's not like a road bike. I've, <laughs> and I'll wake up the next day and I can't walk. I cannot walk. Um, and I was lucky that Martin Nikoski, um, he was sort of delegated to look after me and get me through. So I had to train in the mornings before training, um, and then afternoons when all the boys had left. And that was sort of the hardest thing. Like, I'd let mates down, family down, teammates down, a club down. But, like, knowing your teammates was so pissed off. You know, I know, like, blokes in that team and that squad and people before me have tried their ass off to get the opportunity that I've got. And I've absolutely butched it up. So that was sort of fizzling away in the background. And I had to go do some running with, with Nico and I could barely, barely move. And I said, Nico, man, I'm feeling so... He said, why are you so sore? I said, man, I've, I've, I've ridden... He said, where'd you ride to? And that, that was like Nico's like, mate, you this is you need to start changing the way you're thinking, looking at everything. Because I was just shoot from the hip, go for it, do whatever, I'll deal with the consequences later, sort of thing. Yeah, unfit, uh, ride till your legs fall off. Yeah, <laughs> just go. Yeah, that's, and I was just yeah, I was just no, I had no idea about it. Um, which isn't an excuse at all. Like, you, and that's on me for not actually sourcing. I've got people around me, in clubs, people, yeah. people at the club. You got abundance of resources. Uh, I hadn't sourced any of them out to help me get better in that space, but Nico really took me under his wing and um, showed me the ropes of sort of what it means to be professional. And um, yeah, it's just the sort of I'm not. It's not the guidelines, I guess. It's just a, this is the basic way of trying to live as an AFL footballer. Um, what was that? Um, sorry, what was that meeting like then when you came back after the tra- after training for a few months? Uh, the me- it was brief with Simo. Um, he, uh, the, the, there was an underlying thing of the whole meeting. Like, I was obviously banished, of mm. course. Like, uh, But there was an underlying confidence in Simo I could feel. Like, he threw me to the wolves a bit with it, which is fair enough. Like, I would have done the same. But um, there was this underlying confidence of he sort of rated me. Yeah. Um, I felt like there's people at the club that sort of rated me. And I thought, oh, these guys, are they're not cunting me. They haven't. They could eat. Like, I would have sacked me for sure, um, but they didn't. So they've mm. got some sort of beliefs there. So I was sort of had this underlying belief of of everything. I come back with Simo, and he's like, "Mate, I'm proud of what you've done, and um, well done. Like you've just got yourself into good shape. You're still fair fair weight behind, but you need to keep working at it." Um, and then he sort of mentioned, "I trained really well one of those days in one of the match sims or something." He goes, "Mate, look, to be honest, I'm just pissed off because I think you can play. I, I want you in my side." Uh, I'm just I'm pissed off that you didn't come back in good nick, so I can't, it's very hard for me to pick you. Um, and I was like, well, all right. That, no one's really said that to me. No one's really given me that sort of belief, I guess. Um, and it wasn't much, and he probably wouldn't even remember it, but it was just enough for a young kid like that to go, all right, well, I don't want to let him down now. Um, I've let all these other people down. I've got an opportunity to try and redeem myself, and I ended up playing that year. Um, yep. I, th- I don't know what round Round six <coughs> Round uh, It was against Carlton Carlton yeah um, Round six Eddie yep. Had Stadium Yeah Play as a forward Yeah I was kick, a forward Kick a goal No no sorry I was back I was back in that game You were too So Did you kick I a goal, kicked a goal though? From full back yeah I, yes. remember, I remember Glassy Glassy had a rest Because he's It was an old fella At that stage um, And I got my opportunity To play And uh, Yeah I snagged one I was like <laughs> Running down the fat side of the ground. I, that's the thing. I, I And then I remember Glassy grabbed me. and goes, mate, I've been trying to kick a goal from fullback for years. <laughs> what are you doing? 
Um, I got I mongreled it too. I was it was a decent shot. From, Shock. Yeah, yeah. It went straight, but um, <laughs> she didn't come off the boot too nice. But <laughs> but it went in. Uh, and mate, that was like um, that was such a good moment for me. Um, obviously getting there playing your first game is great. But I just remember like all the boys how much they got around you. And I remember Coxie just grabbing me and just you know just screaming like you know this is what it's about. So this is what it's about, mate. This is why we fight. this is why we play footy. And I was just looking at him like, this is Coxie, mate. Like, how sick's this? <laughs> yeah. Like, one of the greatest blo- like, blokes and players loved him. Um, and he's and I was just looking at him like, yeah, this he's right. This is exactly what footy's about. You know, these boys have been with me the whole time. I finally got back on the right track, playing my first game of footy, enjoying it, loved my life. Um, and then your mates were all getting around you as well. It was, yeah, it was sick. I loved it. Um, I remember one from that year. Uh, it was your ninth game, actually. I had to go back and look what game it was. It was it uh, against Adelaide at Adelaide Oval, and you were you were backman. I think they were swinging you around that year. They, yeah. they played you a bit forward, a bit back. So you played, you know, your first game as a back. But I reckon you spent a fair chunk forward. Yeah. And then like your first or second game back as a backman later in the year was against Adelaide. Oh, and um, I remember this. And, I, and I was in the team. I was playing back. Butsy was out there. Um, you know, Darren Glass might have been out there, and Shannon Hearn was certainly there. Anyway, um, we used to play like someone pretty deep at the back, and I usually was one of the back back when I was good with my voice, keeping people in front. And uh, the game had started. Eddie Betts kicked three goals in the first five minutes, oh. and the crowd was going crazy. <laughs> this was Adelaide in there, like these yeah. guys. This is like, like could have been the first year at the new start, like their new. And the way that they were, they were the best offensive team going. Like these blokes knew, knew how to score and like quick yes and i felt every bit i keep going. I, I well i i just hear i'm using the one at the back and i, just, I hear this like noise behind me and it's like this whistling noise oh, it's genuinely whistling <laughs> can you make it i remember <laughs> <laughs> i was wheezing it was Mate. wheezing and i was, I was like, like what what is some sort of gasket has blown steam train so i don't know what was going on. i turn around and young Jeremy McGovern <laughs> is jogging up the field. Oh, we're three, we're four, four goals to nothing down. It's like the 2018 <laughs> grand final. I think final. they kicked six straight on us in that first quarter. Like, it was like, that was I've, like first I could play back and then all forward. And then they thought, oh, we'll throw you back again. I looked and at I was you, like, I've, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make it. I can't play. Man. I've never I'm seen more fear in a man's eyes. We were chasing any bets around. Mate, I was everyone. Like, we were just <laughs> absolutely, like, every, oh, don't get me wrong. Everyone was blowing but i was whistling i was uh, absolutely squealing and i got to the bench and like kof our fitness guys like mate you're right i said mate if the game keeps going like this you're gonna have to sub me out man like i can't like this is next level luckily the game did settle and we 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 end up winning that yeah, game we won we um it was high score yeah we, we got 30 to 110 yeah it was oh, a boy. shootout it was um it was going. I thought, oh, I'm not. Get me back up in the fourth line. I just remember telling God, me and me and Bunga, we've got a great relationship yeah. with one of the great teammates and captains. I just remember looking at Bunga and being, I, was, I said to him, without him here, I was, mate, all right, Gov's struggling here, mate. We've got to get him <laughs> yeah. off. And he goes, right, get him off, get him off. Tell him to get off. Yeah. Turn around, I was like, Gov, get the fuck off. Get off. And Gov's gone, ah, ah, no, no, I'm right, I'm right. No, get off, mate. Get off. You can't even run. That was the first time. I didn't even know. No, like, so they just throwing me the asthma puffer and I'm doing all this stuff. <laughs> the asthma puffer. Having the asthma. Wait, are you they, asthmatic it, or is that just- No, I found out. So after that, they went and tested me because I was like, I was, I was dying. I was like, <laughs> So I went and tested me and they said, you got asthma. I said, well, one of the, they had I know I'd had asthma. I've never even had it before. Now, so I puffed on the asthma puffer and it's, it fixed me a little bit. I'm still still not the greatest runner ever, but <laughs> that was um, that was really a, a big penny drop moment of like, man, you've got to really, this is the level. Like, you know, like Adelaide were flying. Like that's just a level you need to be playing at. And that's what you can come up uh, against ref- in games. On reflection, uh, yeah, you've you've always put your hand up and, and owned it. It's a pretty good lesson for for young kids, though. Like yeah. you've had to live through, and it was a pretty f- tough lesson. Getting yeah, kicked away from the club. Um, but you, but you've, I think, repaid the footy club to to, to some point. Do you do you look back at that as l- like life lessons? Do you try and teach yeah. other kids about it? Like, um, I don't really teach or tell or whatever. Like everyone, I've, everyone's got such a different story and a different path and way of getting there. And fortunately and unfortunately for me, I guess, like fortunately, I. I'm glad I did go through that and that sort of happened to me because I'm in the situation I got to, I guess. If I didn't get to the situation I got to, I'd be livid that that happened to me. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's just a, a lesson in life for me personally. Like, um, For me, it's just the way of looking at things and it's something that you, um, as you get older now as a player and a senior player, it's just the way you look at things and your mindset towards things. Um, so, yeah, and 
it went back to my core values of what I value and rate in life. And it's doing stuff with your teammates, your friends, your family, uh, trying to do them proud and um, do as much as you can. And I, I pissed that up the wall for a couple of years there. And luckily enough, I got an opportunity to try and make amends. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it, I well, guess. Well, and that's pretty much what you did, right? So 2014, you played something like 13 games in your first season of AFL, but you're 22 years old. So yep. you're almost like a mature yeah. Pick up really. 2015, uh, you're in the All Australian squad. You don't get All Australian 2015. So you're a four time All Australian 2016, 17, 18, 19. A bit slack the last couple of years. <laughs> um, uh, 2015, though, do you, what are your memories of that year? Like, it, yeah. Is it favorite, that was a great year. year. It was right up there for me. Yeah. We played in the grand sick. final. Yeah, it was just same thing. Like, everything, like, it was just a one out of the box, I think, for that year for us as a footy club myself. Probably yourself as well, Scoey, with everyone. We, it was different. Obviously, Simo was back, different sort of game plan. Everything sort of changed. We went through the teething stuff in 14. Yeah. Uh, and then 15, we sort of had our head around the way Simo wanted to play, I guess. But Mitch then we, Brown, Eric McKenzie go down with ACL. Those two go down year. and um, Glassy retired, I think, 14. Yep. Uh, then we, yeah, lose Eric McKenzie and Mitch Brown, like two A grade defenders. Um, and I was sort of just trying to find a spot, whether it be forward or back or ruck. <laughs> <laughs> or wherever it was but um yeah then we just it was just blatantly obvious like all right gov you got to play down back um scoey was playing multiple positions really weren't you, you were sort yeah. of you when i first got you were sort of half forward even wing that, um <coughs> that off half back that off season i put on like nine kilos of muscle yeah. simo wanted me to be bigger and just by chance yeah be easy and brownie went down so i went from running around at like 87 88 to playing at like 97 98 like I, I changed my yeah. body, not knowing what was going to happen. But effectively, you and I were the, the only two key position backmen. We Tom, were the Tommy only Brass ones was there, but he yep. was raw. Real uh, raw. To put, child. That, to put yeah. that nicely, he was a child. And, and so, then, yeah. yeah, we just had to throw that back six together. Like, even Shep, like, I don't think Shep had played much down back really then. He was playing wing and half forward, and then he was lobbed into the mix. Um, Sharad, he was a midfielder, really, midfielder yeah. half forward. We threw him in there. Um, Butsy was pretty much Butsy and Bunger are the two main actual defenders. Yeah. So for us, it was I, I loved it because it was just free. It was um, we had Adrian Hickman as our coach, and it wasn't do this, do that. It was more you guys are all unique in your own way. Figure it out. Um, you lose Eric McKenzie and Mitch Brown, extremely good one on one defenders. They'll grind you to the ground, run with you all day. Then you get me, who cannot run with you all day. Um, young. Uh, play completely different. I like to read the ball and and try to win the footy back as much as I can. Uh, same with Shep, a bit different. Sharad didn't see him next to anyone ever. No. Um, and then it just formed this back six that it didn't. Cha- I don't think it changed the game, but it changed the way I think people looked at defenses. Uh, for us, it was in, uh, it was all off intercept and turnover off half back and. Going back with a bit of interest. Um, I reckon I might have been the only bloke in that back line not intercepting the ball. There was like Banger, Hearn, yeah. Alice was a good intercept. Like X Bart's exactly like, the same. Yeah. I, I may have well been the only bloke defending in the whole back yeah. line. You blokes <laughs> yeah. just running around taking marks. And I was mate, a that, step ladder. And that was your strength. Like, yeah, that was your strength of, you know what, I'm more than happy to do my role. And we had blokes in our back six who would, Scully's role the whole time was, how can I make Gov better? Pretty much, that's how it felt for me. Anyway, yeah, how can how can I about. get him in great positions so we can win the footy back and we we don't have to defend as long because if we win it back, we can get it going the other way. But yeah, that was fifteen was a great year. Um, you um you changed to number twenty at the start of twenty fifteen, was it? Yes, so Coxie must retire that year yeah. as well. So did you quickly was it, snap yeah. that up after no, that? Was uh, no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. I was I was this. I was the stubborn kid, like, I'm not leaving 42 or make my name 42, all that. <laughs> Never leaving. I'm Till I die, I'm having this thing. And then Coxie sort of flicks me a message. He goes, just said, do you want to wear the number 20? And I'll buckle the knee straight. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, mate, Coxie, man, there's no way I'm saying no to him. Um, yeah, what would you write back? Um, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. I'll, I've, I've thought about it, but there's no <laughs> way. Yeah, I'll uh, yeah message back. So, mate, I'd love to. And then... Obviously, the club called and said, do you want to wear it? And I said, yeah, no worries. I think the only reason he asked me is because it was the only person who would fit on the list so they didn't have to change the jumper size too much. <laughs> I, think you, I think you broke the record that year, um, most contested intercept marks in, in a season. Oh, I did? Ever, yeah. Didn't even realise yeah. I was a stat. Yeah. Um, there you go. 
Yeah, I, like that was my favourite year of footy playing exactly for your <laughs> reasons. It was, it was just a – it was a fun year because no one really rated us either and then we go on to make a grand final. We're pretty disappointing in that grand final. Yeah, though. extremely bad. Yeah. Do you, do you remember much about it? Oh, uh, oh, that's the thing. The whole year was so quick. Like we were just we were just flowing. Everything was just going, and um, even our coaching group was young. Uh, we were reasonably young, so we had Butsy, I think, and X. Yep. Butsy and X were the only two. Sharad. Did X? Yeah, X played. In it. Yeah, and Sharad. We had yep. minimal. Yep. No one that had any experience. Um, we'd played on MCG frigging twice in four years or something because we never <laughs> get a game on there. But um, yeah, we just we were deer in the headlights that whole grand final scene the whole days the weeks before it everything leading up to it was just we were getting consumed by it um or i definitely was uh and then by the time you hit game day you run around you're like what the hell is even going on here and then you come up against hawthorne um on the three peat great side like you'd you get we, we would have had to play it our best to beat them that day um to be any chance of beating them and we're obviously off and as soon as they smell blood like they're a good side they just absolutely put their foot down and um and dominate us but um it was embarrassing that was a real embarrassing that way you felt yeah yeah it was embarrassing for us um as a footy club purely not because of just the result i think it's just the way we played like if we went down swinging and uh played our way a little bit and uh got beaten by a better side i think would be you could hold our heads high but we got absolutely dominated in all aspects so um but then hindsight you get 18 well, let's get to 18. So the lead up to 15, you say you get consumed by the week and, and what's going into it. 2018, the week of the grannies, I can't imagine you saw too much of that. Nah, nothing. So, so the prelim final, uh, contest in the goal square, defensive uh, goal square, smallest bloke on the ground hits you. And, um, mate, I don't think it's Petrarca. What <laughs> Extremely powerful bloke. Uh, one, of the, one of the Melbourne players run through you and just – Got you pretty flush, and what 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 happened? What yeah, no, he's, yeah, he got me, yeah, got me good. Um, thing, it didn't look like much, like, and it didn't feel like much at the stage. Like, I f- thought I just got winded, um, and I obviously kept playing the rest of the game out, um, and I just I kept getting sorry. I just got hit right between my ribs and I guess my hip bone, like straightening in my guts, pretty much. Um, yeah, he just flushed me deep, and I, yeah, I thought I got winded, and it was just a bit of a cork, and then I kept um, right like kept playing. Time. I can't remember when I it was. I just break. remember it was in the in the goal square there somewhere. I should have just kept my feet and I would have been all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it got kept playing. Everything was pretty good. Uh, then it started to get keep getting sore throughout the game, but whatever, we were flying. It was a great game. Uh, finished with the docs and docs looked at me and just said, "You're you might have a bit of a bruising, internal bruising, a bit on your abs and all that, but you'll be fine." Right. And I was driving home. Lucky my old man was with me. Um, I was driving home and I've as soon as I started. Tried to get out of the car. I just started getting all these pains in my guts and back. And I was just going, Dad rings, I was just going white. And I was just screaming. Um, it was bad. And I literally slid back in the car. Dad drove me straight up to the hospital. Um, and I just had all this internal bleeding and shit and stuff. <laughs> shit. You, you can, can I swear? Can swear. Oh, great. Can, I had all this. You've already sworn all the time. <laughs> and, you can, and you're allowed to as well. Yeah, I had all this internal bleeding and um, everything else going on in. Um, throughout whatever um and then yeah i got admitted to hospital and i'm trying to drain all the blood and that because it's a big cork massive cork inside there and it's just bleeding um all around your kidneys and um whatever other organs you got in there because it's twofold right see we're, we're playing in a grand final in seven days so yes they're trying to look after you and yeah. make sure you're okay but they're trying to get you to play like, yeah 100%. they, they want to make sure you're okay but they also oh the thing is that's what i have i feel like i had that in my head of i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine i've got the grand final next week you're fine mate stop whinging about it and then it just got to the point where it was so bad yeah and then i got yeah got to the hospital and they're doing the stuff trying to get all this blood and all that out and had to get me on the um morphine drip and everything it was i was bad like you know, no good uh and then i stayed the night and i remember Kofi coming in fitness guy and uh, stevie gavina coming in and going mate how you going and i just remember walking in and just looking at me and like they didn't they just look on their face i was like i must be bad i must look really bad I was like, no, mate, I'm all good. You know what you like as a young kid. No, sweet, mate, I'll be right for the weekend. And I uh, stayed in there till Tuesday night or Wednesday because I, they couldn't, I couldn't move. Like it was just such a big inflated cork um, in my guts and I just could, couldn't move. Um, and then tried to train Wednesday. I was doing all this different stuff, trying to get it moving and um, putting all these blood thinners in it, trying to get all the blood out. Um, just like a cork When you get a cork in your leg you, you got to flush it You've got to get the blood moving Get it out And we couldn't get it uh, Until Steve Gravina 
um, the great man. I love him to death. He, <laughs> so I wouldn't Steve have played. Physio. Steve's a physio. What about so? You wouldn't. Have I wouldn't have played without him. No way. There's no way. Um, so because we tried everything to the doctor's book, I guess. And Stevie Gavin has got a, a not left side of view, but he's he's got a different way of looking at stuff and different methods. And um, and this is when Wim Hof had just come out. Like it's just a recent thing. And he sent me this video. I said, mate, I want to try this with you and see if we can get your rib cage and everything going and getting all your organs going. He goes, try this so it's deep a breathing. breathing. breathing technique. It's a breathing technique. And then you hold your breath. And you, if anyone has done it, it's worth doing. Like you're trying it. I've, I was hallucinating and there was heaps going on with, with this big Stevie Gavina. But yeah, I started doing that and everything started to get moving. Um, and did that. We're doing water running. Yes, you were. I've got some good What's footage of that. Running? Oh, mate, don't ever do water running. Oh, it's... The, well, it's, I, it's we, exactly what it is. You're in water yeah, running. But you, right. he had a, a band around your waist, so you're yeah. pulling your back. So you're just running on the spot pretty much. And it just, you f- I felt like a baby draw. I felt awkward <laughs> and it was just shocking. But we're just trying everything. We, could, we had to try everything. Um, and then, yeah, the Wim Hof stuff started getting me moving so I could get on the flight, get over to Melbourne. I hadn't trained. Um, so you guys over by this point? You, you stayed back in No, nah, so we, we flew over Thursday. Right. Yeah. So we that was our day off that Thursday morning. So I just got out Tuesday, um, come in to try to do some stuff Wednesday. I could barely do anything. And then we did the Wim Hof and everything in the morning, so I could get on this flight and got on that flight. And then um, how was that? The yeah, flight? flight was fine. Like everything, everything was pretty good. I was just sore. Like I just couldn't move probably. Um, so I hadn't trained anyway. Get over there and um, yeah, trying to go through all the procedures, get everything done. Um, I remember. Right before, so we 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 every day. I was up at six o'clock, and we're just doing all this different stuff for Stevie, and we we're finishing at six o'clock in the Arvo, just trying to do everything we could. And Stevie was there with me the whole way, and then we had the grand final parade. Yes, and the club. I Vozo said, "Mate, do you need this?" Time? I said, "Mate, I need, I need this. It's a two or three hour ordeal." I said, "Mate, I need this. I can't, I've got to. Prep, I've got to try and get up for this game. I can't be sitting in a car." Waving to everyone for um, three hours. I need to try and prepare to get, get up for this game. So they said, all right, no worries. We're going to go to the parade and leave you here. And I was there and we're doing literally doing the Wim Hof breathing and um, Stevie's massaging it and whatever else. And then um, I get a phone goes off. Stevie Green's phone goes off and he gets the call from Vozza. And Vozza says, oh, you've got to um, got to come to the parade now. And I, I was like, oh, mate, we're halfway through this. It's, he said, no, nah, you've got to come. Um, there'll be a fine. And Stevie's like, oh, all right, how big's the fine? Like, can we, is there a possibility we can pay? Because Stevie's like, man, he really needs his time. And I was like, let me check. And calls back, goes, no, nah, fine's too, the, the, we, we will pay the fine. He goes, but the AFL said, if you don't get to this grand final parade, you can't play. <laughs> so I was like, getting up in a taxi, drove to the top of the thing, they're waiting for me. And one of the things we said before um, we got to this grand final from previous, obviously 15, it's, you're not rock stars. The grand final parade, you got to respect it for the fans and everything, but it's you're not going to remember it whether you win, lose, draw. You're not going to really sit around and go, how great was that grand final parade? And it was just a thing of us not not having sunnies and being rock stars. Don't all. wear your sunnies. Don't wear I don't, oh, we could wear hats. No sunnies. Don't take photos. No phones. Just be humble about it. Yeah, just be there and wave for the fans. Um, and we've got a job to do sort of thing. And I've rocked in late in a taxi. So there's 21 people sitting in the parade. It's And we're sitting there late waiting for him, right? <laughs> and so Maston's sitting by himself yeah, in the car. Has, um, Hawthorne. Collingwood, uh, sorry, uh, Collingwood, yeah. Collingwood. Collingwood yeah, they were, yeah, they were ahead of it. They're everyone, gone. Yeah. Yep, Collingwood's gone. We're sitting around waiting for old Doofy here. <laughs> Um, Mas- Masto's sitting there by himself. Everyone knows Sonny's. What Gov gets onto the Ute. What's he got on? Oh, I'm sunny up. <laughs> oh, he's got the wraparounds on. He's got the proper wrap. off, man. It still pisses me off because I got my sunnies on and I'm standing up and I'm like, I was because I was I was like the last card or something. I thought I'll sneak in here. I'll get in, just get on my car, get the old all good, and we'll get going. As soon as I've got out there, like every single media camera, <laughs> everything was just like flashing in my face. <laughs> And I didn't know and I sat down and like, everyone's interviewing. I said, no, I'm all good. Just trying to get ready for the game, blah, blah, blah. And I'm doing all this, just photos, everything. And then I've turned and we took off and Matt says, like, good to see you listen to the no sunny policy, mate. <laughs> and I'm just there like, no. I'm like, looked at him. He goes, <laughs> as Masto does, he goes, yeah, mate, there wouldn't be many photos of that, of you getting on the car. <laughs> if you Google Jeremy McGovern Grand oh. Final Parade, it's just sunglasses. Like, there's nothing else but sunglasses. But we, we had a lot. Like, the, then all the, the WhatsApp groups going nuts. Like, good on you, Gov. You're rock star. You're, 
<laughs> everyone was getting into me the whole time. It was, it was funny, but at the same time, it, was, it pissed me off. They, they, it got to the stage, they took his sticker off the car. They pulled, there was their stickers, McGovern, Maston. Right. They'd taken it off. Yeah. And so then there was, that's why the scrum was at the Ute, because I was like, what's going on here? Gov's not coming right. thing. Yeah. And then there was all this back and forth with the AFL. <laughs> AFL threatened to not let us train. Yeah. Um, on the Friday at the MCG if you didn't yep. come and then they're like you're not even playing in the game so they I just remember because I was a couple in front of it they were re-sticking his sticker back on it was like all crinkled and, uh, it was very good yeah we're taxi and it was, it was good fun um, so uh, um, let's talk about the game but but you rock up game day onto the bus and you say you're not a fucking cry but I reckon you're almost crying on the bus because you you, you, you hadn't thought about the game right not once mate. You, you sit in front of me on the bus I and you were having a mental breakdown. Like a no, nah, I was just like, it just hit me. I, when I got the bus, sitting, we all sit in the same spots with the boys. I'm sitting right next to Masto. And yeah, I just literally got in the bus and I just sat down for like two minutes as we drive. And I'm like, I'm actually probably going to play one of the biggest games of my life here. I'm actually playing. Um, and I was like, I haven't done one out. Like I'd barely been to many meetings. I'd like, we were just, I hadn't trained. I did the captain's run. Which he asked Tim Jepp how well I was moving in the captain's <laughs> run. Um, it was very, very poorly. Um, I literally circa 2014 uh, first kilometre. Yeah, first yeah, game. But this was for other reasons. Yeah, similar scenes. Oh uh, yeah, I did a couple of miles. I had to go do my fitness test. We went downstairs and did it, and yeah, well, it wasn't it wasn't great fitness. I definitely yeah, it wasn't a great fitness test. Put it that way. Yeah, and I got on the bus and I was just just hit me. I was like, I've got to play. Um, you know, opponents. What's going on? Who are we playing um, again? Colling, yeah. <laughs> Collingwood, what, how's this? And then oh, we'd, we'd played him a fair bit that year, um, a couple of times. So that was all sweet, but it was just a big realisation of uh, I'm about to run out and do this. And I haven't even thought about it really. Um, I thought about whether I'm going to play or not going to play, but I hadn't thought about that I'm actually playing. Now I've got to dial in and actually perform. And the pressure was on because you don't want to go into a grand final um, and be a busted ass and let the boys down. That was my biggest worry. I was like, if I go out there and I can't contribute and I could be the difference between us winning and losing and then I am the difference between winning and losing and we lose, I'm technically robbing. I felt like I was going to be robbing my other 22, 21 yeah. teammates um, of a premiership. So that was probably the hardest thing for the decision. Like pain and stuff. And anyone you ask, mate, anyone would play, everyone would play through, through pain and do what they can. The hardest thing was just whether I can contribute and not be a busted ass out there and, and not be able to help us get a win. Which you did. You played well. You're in the best players. You play an outstanding game. You break your other ribs. Yeah. Is that what happened? See, this is... So it, we, we, had is Ma we had Mason Cox on the podcast, mm, right? Yeah, yeah. And I told him, and he said, did I? I didn't realise I did yeah. that. It was a big yeah, tackle from Cox, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it so like, it, everyone thought I broke my ribs fully. I hadn't broken them before the game. Um, I had that issue and then... Um, Obviously, I was getting a bit early from the boys, like as you would, as a Collingwood boys. And Chris Main was getting into me a bit, which fair play, bloody oath. Yeah. Um, that's that's what it's about. Um, and he kept hitting the other side, and I was like, "Oh, how good?" He's hitting the wrong side. <laughs> I didn't say that to him, but I'm thinking he kept, kept going on the wrong side. And then he kept, they just oh, kept oh, hitting. Oh, yeah, <laughs> not that side, not that side, mate. That's that's my bad one. Um, yeah, so the, and as rightly so, that's just the game footy and what was happening at grand final line, um, and that was all happening. Then it was any, any time I was getting tackled or, you know, you got to give him a push, hold on a bit, bit earlier. And I remember I don't know what it might have been third quarter. I was yeah. pick, pick the ball up on the boundary and um, Big Mason got hold of me, and I was just we'll take the ball over the boundary and we'll let it go. And I've sort of just held the ball and just tried to fall over the boundary, and he drove me in the ground, which. He's Fair huge. enough, but I fell on the ball, and as I fell on the ball, it cracked my other side of my rib. <laughs> I felt it pop, and I was like, oh, oh I think I've cracked my rib here. Mason. I got up, I let it go, I was like, I reckon I've cracked, and I just popped it straight through. So when you crack them, I mean, I've cracked them before, they're way worse than breaking them through. So you broke it through? So you just pop, broke through and was just stable, but broke through. Um, what, what, what do you mean? Do you like you push it to rib. snap it? Yeah, so it just cracked straight through, and... Yeah, it, was it just didn't just there. crack, yeah, it yeah, yeah. snapped. Yeah, yeah it snapped it. Yeah, yeah. But bro, cracked ribs I've had is way worse pain than right. breaking it through. Because it's like almost re-breaking yeah, yeah, and breaking. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's bending and just hurting. Where this was like hurt for a bit and then you just, we just got on with it. Um, and yeah, got on with the game. And and then obviously after the game, I had to go get the scans to go get it. I thought, oh, man, I might have cracked my other rib and then got a scan. <laughs> I broke, yeah, broke it through. And then that's when everyone says, oh, you broke the ribs before you got. I said, no, nah, I broke, actually they broke during the game. Um, 
Do you remember the moment? McGavin, <laughs> to Vardy, <laughs> to Ryan, to Shea. Oh, mate, do, you, do, you, do you remember? I'm trying not to remember it. Everyone keeps reminding you. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not trying not to remember. Sorry. But yeah, I do. I remember it. Yeah. But like, that's that, 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 that mark that sets up the moment that Shea kicks the goal in. You're playing in front of your opponent, which is yep. Dugowie. Well, my opponent, because I was in the middle of the MCG doing it. <laughs> I <laughs> wanted up there. I'm not going to tell that story. Whatever. But you, that's that's what you do. It wasn't by mm. chance that you, like some people I think, and I'm and I, i probably a proponent of this because I talk a bit of mm. shit when I talk about this. And But uh, you, you did what you always do. Play in front of your opponent, played for the footy, yeah. got up, tried to take the game on because there wasn't long yep. left. Is that? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just playing footy. Like that's, yeah, that's just the way I play, I guess. Um I get a lot of shit for it for everyone saying I don't plan anyone, but they're all pretty quiet after that mark, I think. But um, yes. did you? How long did you think you had left? Uh, that was the only thing that I remember. So I got the my instructions from Praddy. Um, I'd just come on not long after that, uh, not long before that, um, and he just said, "Mate, when we got to go, we've got to get the ball going if we can. Um, so if you get the opportunity in your market, you got to go." Um, that was the only thing I had run through my head. Really, that was the only instruction I. So I had gone through the rest of it was just I was um, I was just f- not f- I guess it's free or whatever it is I just felt I was just playing footy and now like I look at it now and I'm like what are you doing man like if you if you stuff that up or you that ball goes out the back they win the game yeah. but I wasn't thinking like that at all I was thinking I wasn't thinking anything I was just the ball was there um, go for it back yourself in go for it I was, yeah I was just literally just playing footy I felt like I was just flowing. Uh, the whole game, uh, there wasn't really any conse- – I didn't think of any consequence or if I stuffed anything up, it was get the ball. And then as soon as I got it, I just – I land, I, I had to go. So I, was, I went, <coughs> turned, and there was – I just remember seeing so many Collingwood players. <laughs> and I was like, I've played on here, <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> and then all I see is this big Russian sm- like smirking at me, like didn't – you could see he didn't want that footy. <laughs> And I'm not look, Barty. Nathan Barty, if anyone, and I'm looking at him and then I copped eye contact. Like, I'm, I've got to go for this, mate. <laughs> and I just kicked it, obviously hit him. And then uh, the same thing. And now I've looked at it. And I'm like, oh, mate, if I miss that kick. Yeah, there's just so much. And I just didn't have any of those thoughts at all. I was just, yeah, just playing footy. And um, I guess it's something I just grew up with. My, I, the whole, it's funny, the whole play that and every, the way it happened, it's just what I've been taught, uh, the way I've played my whole life since I can remember. And it's just, if you can back yourself in to go get the footy, go get it um, in the air. Get your knee up to protect yourself and take the ball at the highest point. That's that's keep literally it. That's keep, keep your feet. Keep your feet, get told that all the time. And I still get told that now because I, I do go to ground a fair bit when you're coming down. But um, they're just, it's funny that you, you get told all these things your whole footy career and get them ingrained in you. And then in that play, I guess it glorifies them a little bit, but... Yeah, it's, it was just a natural thing that I guess it's just years and years and years of just doing it. And um, in that instance, it helped us and obviously become the moment. But um, the moment. Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah, it was just a, f- I felt free. I was, it was just playing. I loved it. What were you thinking about when you kicked the goal after the siren? Adversely. A poor? Yeah. Uh, was that 2018? Mm. Was it? Round 18. Yeah, there you go. Um, you would have been thinking a bit more. No, nah, if you're I was, talking about just playing footy, you would have had more going through your head, surely. Mate, do you know what? I didn't. I was, I, I don't even know. I didn't even th- the same thing. I didn't even think about miss. I thought I was thinking about how I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking once this goes in, how am I celebrating? And then there was, there was one other thing. There was one other thing that I was thinking. Obviously, when it all happened, I went forward because I was back. I was seeing yeah, that I went forward. What are you doing down there? Well, because we had to win the game, so they sent an extra behind the ball. So I was, I'm the guy that goes, well, normally if you send an extra, I'll go behind the footy, uh, for the footy, sorry. Um, and I remember getting down there because Ebert had run from the wing yes. as their extra. And I remember as I was going down, Ebert's, Ebert and Jonas were arguing about who's going to pick me up. And they, they just kept arguing. And I, I thought, if they don't get this right, I'm going to mark it. That's all I thought. Before I'm, it even happened. Before it even happened. I said, if this ball comes and I get stuck on Ebo, it's no disrespect to Ebo. Jonas is extremely good defender as well. And we just had a height mismatch and it just ha- got kicked in the end. I, was, I thought to myself after, I'm like, they'll be kicking themselves if I kick this goal. And I kicked it. 
what am I going to do to celebrate? And then what we do? And what did I say? Because you, because you, you I just the helicopter. The you yeah, the oh, yeah. No, that wasn't a good kick. No, it was no, it wasn't. Flat. Yeah, it, didn't, it was. It, she, it went straight. I'm more than happy. No, no, it came off me foot well. <laughs> no, sorry, it didn't come off me foot well. <laughs> no, it came off me foot shocking. But I was, I kicked through it. I had a bit, bit behind it. Um, so it went straight. Uh, but you turned and yeah. said something like. I think it was something about the boys. Yeah, I said, yeah, the fucking boys. Yeah, Yeah, the (laughs) fucking boys. And then, yeah, it was just on. Yeah, there's some shocking fight. Like people sent me a couple of shocking photos of my head in that thing, and I apologise to everyone (laughs) who had to see that and see me carry on a bit. But I don't kick many goals, so. Um, I wanted to ask you about one story. Post grand finals, you win the grand final, premiership player. Um, We we fly back. And uh, we had Scott Lyson on here. Um, the big slice. We had, t- we had Scotty Lyson on here about six weeks ago. Yeah. Told some great stories. One of them, he spoke about his time on the bus on the way from uh, after he um, had a bit of a sleep on, on the plane <laughs> and he got onto the bus. Um, and he, he did tell, he had, there was a quote from Scott. Should I read him the quote? Yeah, read the quote. Yeah, read me the so quote. The, Scott Lyson, this is a quote unquote. Let me tell you something, Gov. <laughs> if you don't shit, you die. <laughs> That's the quote from Scott Lyson. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great quotes from him. He needs to get that tattooed on his chest, Scotty. You don't shit, you die. So, he, yeah, he'd done a bit of business on the bus. Oh, and, and it, <laughs> Did he go into the context of the whole thing? Yeah, well, yeah. two. Oh. Two. He was in his footy boots. Yeah, mate, he was, Scotty, he was a debacle from when we... We got we're told one thing, you got to be on the bus at 8 o'clock in the morning yes. after the celebration. So it's, it's just Sunday one morning. thing. Boys, go ahead. I'll see you Sunday morning at 8. You have to be here. Scott Lyson, not there. <laughs> Only Rock, person. Rocks up, no medal, no jumper. <laughs> then Simo says, has anyone lost their medal? And he's like, who the hell is an idiot who's lost their medal? <laughs> I'm like, what is going on here? You have lost your medal, mate. <laughs> Like, Scotty, where's your medal? He's like, oh shit, it's my medal. He runs up, and Simo's holding, he just snatches it off him. He goes, oh, that was lucky. <laughs> oh, here we go. This is going to be a good trip home. He's still in his footy boots and everything else. <laughs> Gets on the flight, carrying on, and we get on the bus, uh, on the flight, and we're just, all we're thinking, every single bloke on that thing, except for Nathan Vardy yes. and Redden, the two pests, which you probably expect. Biggest pests. We're just penciling in four hours of sleep. We haven't had any. We're going back to a shit show. It's going to be going off in Perth. 80,000 or something I was saying on that front Langley, Langley Park, Park or whatever yeah. so I'm like this is penciling like we were lucky we got the business, business seat so it was just guts up for 40, four hours except for Scotty <laughs> Scotty's in the back like Jim Beam Jim Beam <laughs> who wants Jim Beam <laughs> he's chanting he's chanting that and I'm like oh, mate I don't know Jim Beam's right now like we're going to have plenty of Jim Beams at Kelly Day's like 8 o'clock in the morning oh mate and then oh, so I'm going to sleep to the chant of Jim Beam Jim Beam <laughs> <laughs> and then I so I wake up, I wake up and go go the bell goes off and the thing everyone prepares from getting up. I'll go for a walk seeing who's away, like Vardy and, and Red and the creatures in the corner just barely holding on, still drinking. And I go to Scotty Lice, he's got his son, he's on s- sitting up like twi- like I don't know how what, in what position he's in. I said, like, Scotty, Scotty and he's like, hey, what's going on? I said, mate, we're we're about to land, mate. How are you going? He goes, Oh, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> What do you mean? I just couldn't sleep. I said, yeah. So what? He goes, oh, I just had to have some sleeping tablets. <laughs> said, mate, we're about to land in 20 minutes. <laughs> and you've had a sleeping tablet. <laughs> like, this is Ruckman, mate. This is, oh, this is 101. And yeah. it, it, that'll happen. Get off the, get off the plane. Drag he's him off. Dragging him off in his boots. He's ping-ponging from aisle to aisle the whole way. And getting the bus. And he's still on the back. Or ripping back. And he, there's a toilet in the back of the bus. He opens the door, slams himself. And I said, good. Hopefully he's in there, freshen himself up, <laughs> sit on that tall, have a spew, whatever he had to do, and then I'm just you just sit there, this stench is just ripping through the bus, mate. <laughs> like just, and I'm like, is he serious right now? You, there's no windows, completely enclosed, and he's gone, mate. He's dropping a big grog bog, <laughs> grog bog. And I'm like hitting the door, and he's barking, whatever, and he comes out, and I. Was, and I'm looking at him like Scotty, and everyone in the whole bus. What's because there was no water. He couldn't there was flush no it. water, so he couldn't flush it. This <laughs> thing's just steaming up, mate. The windows are fogging up, and everyone's just going. What? And then I just said, Scotty, you can't do that, mate. You can't come into an enclosed area with no windows, no escape, and drop a big no grog bog no right before we're, we all stink already. And he looks at me and goes, Guff, let me tell you something, mate. If you don't shit, you die." 
And I'm like, just been hit with a ton of wisdom. And I'm like, oh, uh, fair call, Scotty. Thanks, mate. No worries. And just sat back down. He just sits back down in his chair and went on with it. We had the parade. And apologies for anyone at the parade if they've seen Scott Lysett, who was a debacle. <laughs> and Chris Maston and me on either side of him. And I said, like, calling all the names. I was like, please don't get sc- call Scotty up to the thing. Please don't, Scott. I was Scott Lysett. And everyone, you just got up and did a bit of a wave. Scott Lysett would, like, lift his arm up. <laughs> I asked him, like, hey, mate, how good was that with 80,000? He goes, was that, was that with the 80,000 then? I said, 80,000, mate. He goes, I don't remember a thing getting off that plane. <laughs> I go, really? He goes, yeah, mate, I was just absolutely knackered. And then, then we didn't see him. We had all the celebrations and the big fella was charging early. There was Sleeping. nowhere to be seen for the next day. Um, but he comes strong, and that's that's why we delisted him at the end of the year and sent him to Port. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's you've got the record for making me cry on the podcast. Oh, mate. That was, was very um, good. The great man, I love Scotty. I'm, I miss him to um, death. He's a legend. There's a couple more uh, quick quick shooting questions to come at you. Um, your brother Mitch, yeah, Adelaide, Carlton. Was there ever a chance he was coming to West Coast? Did you try uh, and get him to West Coast? Yeah, I was trying to try yeah. to get him to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was. Because I think we m- m- both might have been out the same year. I can't remember. But it was was a pretty close crossover of contracts. Um, I was always in his ear to come over and um, tell him, oh, yeah. And I think he sort of was pretty keen to come back. To play together, like two brothers. Yeah, we want to play together, yeah. That was probably our main thing is just playing together. And um, But obviously the circumstance, the way it works out, um, it's very hard to do that. Obviously, yeah, if we could just choose, it'd be great. But um, there's a lot of other things at play. I think um, I remember um, there being a thing around him being gl- linked to Frio, and then yeah. you were out at the same time because it was like, could could they both go to Frio that yeah. year? There yeah. was a bit of talk around that. There was that. That was sort of spoken about a bit because um, your dad played there, right? Dad was there. Yep. Um, so yeah, that was sort of spoken about. I don't think it wasn't like a sit down. Hey, mate, we're going to both try to get to Frio. It was none of that. It was. He was considering going there. He asked me if I'd consider it, and I'd just gone through all my contract stuff. Said, "Mate, if if I can play with you, I'd consider it." Um, but stuff that come to West Coast <laughs> was pretty much the was the motto. Um, and then yeah, he got a really good offer from Carlton. Wanted to go to Carlton. He's always wanted to play for you know the big Melbourne sides and um, in front of big crowds and all that sort of stuff, which doesn't really bother me. But um, yeah, so we end up going to Carlton. Um, didn't end up panning out. Still might. You never know. Um, I'm out of contract this year, so <laughs> yeah. I might end up at Carlton. Oh, home, homesick starts coming out. Yeah, yeah, I'm homesick. I need to get back to Melbourne where I've never lived. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, but um, yeah, I, I'd love to play with him for sure. Mm. Uh, i got one for you. The yep. In 2018 as well, um, a Derby, Walters takes a huge mark on you. Oh, Walters, man. That was a <laughs> cracker. We should have won Mark of the Year, man, him. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him. Yeah, well, I gave him the perfect step. Like, well, Brad Shepard did, actually. Shep, Shep, I'll... Was really angry at Shep after that. He, he, he um, he, I like because I was just watching the highlight before. He's just looking at you. There's not even look at the ball. He's watching you to see how he can jump on you. And as soon as yeah. he jumps and you grabs it, and then what do you say to him? Because you gave him a bit of power. We were on, we were on radio together that year, so we we're on 92.9 at the stage. Right. So I, know, I knew Sonny, and I, I love Sonny. He's a legend. Um, but the thing is, he started, he started having to crack at me because Brad Shepard was laughing. So he was playing on Shep, and I'd obviously dropped off and. It, Beautiful position just to win the footy back for us. And Shep didn't box yeah. Sonny Walters out, let sure. him get this beautiful, nice, great run up. And Sonny's taking this hang and Shep's going, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was massive. <laughs> and Sonny's like, oh, mate, even your teammates saying that's massive. And then Sonny's saying, you, I'll be on the footy card and all that. And I started laughing. I said, yeah, I know I will, mate. It won't be the first time. It won't be the last time. I said, ho- And that's what I said. Hopefully we win mark of the year for it and we'll go halves. <laughs> um, but yeah, bloody shit, man. Let him get a big run and jump. But that was um, that was a big hanger. Um, unfortunately, when you're a backman like that, you're going to be on a couple of footy cards, I think. Uh, last one from me. Um, and then we get to social media. Do you, do you pay much attention to the media? Do you, oh, do mate, you, do you see what's to. written? I used to. Um, it's probably like literally the last 12 months it's just been f- I've just been phasing out it's just too much now eh? because uh, because I mean I, I think anyone who's listened to this whole podcast and the context around uh, that 2013 14 stuff your upbringing yeah. all, all of that sort of stuff that gets lost in mainstream media because it's yeah. um, get the story whatever it is like there, there there's commonly questions about your fitness yeah um, 20, this, this year 2022 mm. there was there was a lot. But I went and did some research. Your first four, five games, no, first four games of this year, 
were your best four games in, in your entire career from a champion data yeah. point of view. Like you were yeah. averaging six intercept marks a game. You, over your career, you averaged three. Um, yeah. There was always uh, – actually, you know what? I'm gonna, still right here. Um, uh, meters gained, you're more than double for your whole – so best ever is 250. You were averaging 375 for the first four games of this year. Intercept marks, your best ever is 3.8 a game. You're averaging six a game. Intercept possessions, your best ever is eight a game. Um, this is averages. You're averaging 12. And spoils, your best ever is five and you're averaging eight. So yeah. – but but there was this like – you weren't fit enough. But also Apparently, is yeah. it that um – the team was just not performing, so it was coming down the back line a lot. So you just had to, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is, that is definitely part of it, but yes. you also got to do it as well. Like, yep, it, correct. yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, yeah. It, this year was random. Like, oh, that's that's. I've I've heard a few things and seen a couple of things here and there, which, so be it. Whatever like, it is, that is what it is. Um, in my eyes, with with the media stuff, they can say and do what they want, really. But the frustrating thing is when they don't fully understand the whole landscape of it. Even like the last three years, I understand I'm not the prettiest guy. I'm um, not the fittest looking footballer ever. Um, I haven't been since I've been in the competition. Um, I've been trying to work on it every year. Uh, the last three years especially, I've I've dropped a fair bit of weight over the years. You, you, I've heard you come out of your mouth. I'm, I, I may, I actually need to go back to being yeah, fat. I'm I'm, you yeah, I'm starting to get there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I've been, I've been conscious of it. Not, not because of media, definitely not. Um, it's purely just because the way the game's going um, and the... The age I'm getting to now, you, you just need to. I've seen a lot of guys come in the system with the, the older boys. They start to drop a lot of weight as they get older, just to to help for their longevity. Um, so I've sort of been doing that the last three years, and that's why it's just a bit frustrating when everyone's going back to the weight thing and how I look. Mm. Um, where if you look my PBs for two Ks every year for the last three years, so uh, skinnies, all that sort of stuff. My weight. If you're going by actually what's happening, I don't. It's just a bit of a kick in the guts when. Everyone's saying you're fat and I'm fit and all this, but if you go back seven years ago when I was playing great footy and um, doing Australians. whatever, all Australians or whatever, it wasn't really getting spoke about then. Um, it well, it might have been, but um, I didn't hear much of it. Where so you're, now fitter, it's, you're fitter now than you were back then? Oh, by a mile. By a country mile. Um, and I've just been conscious of it just purely because you just want to keep getting better. Um, that's an area I need to improve on. I'll, I'll constantly try and improve on it. Um, but then that's a... The frustrating bit for me is you feel like you obviously the team was going poorly, um, and then you obviously look to your, to your bigger players in the team. And I'm not saying I'm the biggest player on that team or any of that, but you look to your senior players. Um, and for me, I felt like I was playing pretty good footy, and I didn't know all those stats, but I felt like the start of my year was as good as I've ever had uh, for a while. And then I you get injured, mm. and for anyone in, out in the media. Oh, no player is trying to get injured. Let me just put it that way. Um, the way it sometimes gets portrayed is that he got injured because he's fat. Or what, I broke my ribs, shattered my ribs. I don't know what I'm meant to do about that, mate. I'm sorry. I it's don't know if that's got anything to do with my fitness or anything. And then uh, you get injured and then a few people have a crack here at your weight, whatever. Like, yeah, I was – it sort of it, – it, the way you, I, you, I used to care about it um, – well, I just don't care now. Like, it doesn't, whatever. Like, it doesn't really bother me. I understand people are doing their job, um, rightly so. And if their job is to try and make people feel bad, which I feel like that's some people's angles at times, um, then they're doing a good job of it. Because when you read it so much or hear about it or see people talking about it or whatever, you can do everything you want. It, it does affect you in a way. You, it, it'll just sit in the back of your mind and it's just a conscious thing. But... Over the years, I've just grown to. If I'm not going to let it bother me, then it won't bother me. Um, which is something I'm just you try and work on as a player, and it's something you try and teach the young kids and talk to young young boys about. Because um, you're going to get criticism, and that's just the way it is. That's our the nature of the beast and what we do. Mm. Um, that's all part of it. Uh, and it's just how you deal with it, I guess. You can't control what everyone's going to say, but when you go back to the well and actually look at your body of work and what you've been doing. It just gives me complete clarity that people are shooting from the hip with a few things. Um, and rightly so, because we're going poorly. Um, I would guess I'm an easy target in that sense. But, um, yeah, for me it was – I felt like it was, a, it was a bit of a kick in the guts, personally. 
when I started hearing a bit of that stuff. Literal. Um, yeah, literally. <laughs> now, very good, mate. You've been outstanding. Appreciate your openness, your honesty, some good stories. The best story I've heard is this Scott Lice. I've never cried like that on, <laughs> on, on the podcast. But you're not done. Social media. You've done this before. You've been on Backchat back in the day. You've done – you know what social media is. This is where the people get to ask you the questions. You've heard it from Dan and I. This is where the people get to ask you some questions. And there's some decent ones in here. Um, oh, Dan. There'll be a couple of loaded ones from a few mates of mine, I bet. Tom Strauss. Uh, people talk about Fife's pipes, but Gov has the ideal male physique. Yes or no? Thank you. <laughs> Who's this guy? It's just comments. Tom. Uh, hello, comment. Hello, Maddie, uh, your beautiful partner. She's obviously writing it. Uh, Marty, or she'd probably say the opposite. Marty, Mud, Marty Mudcrab, six. Uh, after playing the Ruck in 2021 against St Kilda, did you let Nick Nat know it's not that hard? <laughs> <laughs> Funny that actually, because I played the Ruck, um, and I, I feel that the Ruck position isn't that hard. Oh no, so it is hard. It is it's a tough position. But at that, I went thrown in the Ruck, and the first five minutes that I was in there, I we I don't know how many Ruck contests we had. We would have had 15 Ruck contests in a row, and I was squealing again. Um, as I was a couple of years ago. <laughs> and I remember Simo got mate, just the ruck's just not for you, is it? And I just said, mate, just give me another chance, but I will tell Nick that it's not that hard. Very good. Uh, Mitchell Withers. Uh, are you team wheels or doors? And for clarification, is there more wheels in the world or more doors? I believe that's what talk Mitchell's yes. talking about. Do you think there's more wheels Ooh. in the universe or doors? Like a car, a doors. car for instance, has four. I'm doors. Right. I'm doors. I'm wheels. Are ya? Well, like, think about this room right here. There's, like, two doors. Maybe three. Two, four, six, eight, ten, oh, eleven wow. behind you. Okay. Twelve. Yeah. Okay. 13. Well, I mean, like, like you've you got, got five wheels on your seat. You've got five wheels on your seat. Um, there's wheels in that truck over there, the kid's truck. Are they... Are they Oh, they're drawers, not doors. Probably <laughs> lucky, mate. Okay, well, doors first. Okay, there you go. I'm Tap, doors. Tappy 95. How does Big Gov like his eggs? Sincerely, the Eggman. <laughs> Eggman. I like them cooked, for starters. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, 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 mate, scrambled. I'll, I'll have them scrambled. scrambled? That's good. Yeah, Mitch S. Rogers. Um, as one of the game's best defenders and therefore knowing, knowing all there is... Um, to defending, <laughs> do you think Maynard was blocked? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. for sure he was. <laughs> and Sheeta played on. And yes. Played on. Yeah, there's a bit of a shit show in the pocket there for a bit, but as everyone probably said, that that happens a lot and gets and I've had it done to me multiple times, um, and it doesn't get blown. So I think it's just the the way that cookie crumbled in that one. Das underscore twenty three. Uh, Gov, big fan, mate. Possibly your biggest. You're looking quite malnourished on the track at the moment, and I'm worried about you. Um, you look to be having a stroke during the two, um, 2K time trial from the pictures I've seen on social media. Anyway, can I grab my gardening secretaires back off here that you loaned back in 2012? Thanks in advance. Hooroo. <laughs> Is that a question or a statement? <laughs> he wants his gardening secretaires back, mate. Yeah, he can get them back. Oh, they're, they're with it and worn. <laughs> but yeah, you can get them back. Dars 23, mate. Thanks for that comment. And yeah, I was having a stroke. I All right. It. I want um. I want. I want just some 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 quick answers here. Caleb uh, Philip Martin. Do they really call you the King of Albany? Yes. No. Uh, no. Uh, Sh uh, Shane Haddo. How important is defence to a premiership team? The most important. Backs mm. from premierships. Thank you very much. Scott underscore Lysett. I haven't seen what he's doing. <laughs> Do you like eating mud crabs? <laughs> <laughs> What's he talking he knows about? The answer to that. What's he talking about? Oh, Scotty, we were in Hong Kong as a, after the after our. It was about seven days after the bus. Seven days after, and this was his, mid his contract debacle that was happening <laughs> in Hong Kong, and we're in this, some island, some seafood island. We went to, and I don't know why Scott lost. It was he was we were we were, we were pissed. We had a few beers, um, and we're just sitting at this restaurant randomly. Where was it? Some little it was seafood island. Yeah, it was like a it was like a fresh seafood. It was pretty rank. It was like, random, mate. It and was pretty filthy. Yeah, and we just order and f order and feed. And Scotty's blinding. It pulls a thing out and it said mud crabs on the bottom. And he goes, "Oh, does anyone here want some mud crabs?" I'm like, "No one wants mud crabs." <laughs> he goes, "I'm going to get some mud crabs." I felt so sorry for him that everyone was getting into him, and he was in his shell a little bit about these mud crabs. He goes, "Gov, you want some mud crabs?" I said. I'll have some mud crabs, Scotty. You bought these two mud crabs that were 160 bucks each. 
for these mud crabs. And he's lobbed these two mud crabs down. We both sat there and looked at them because you got to get into them with your hands out. We like picked at them a little bit and they just sat there the whole time, didn't even eat them. <laughs> Scotty shouting me $160 mud crabs in Hong Kong. Uh, he made everyone sit there and wait for him to finish. He yeah. finished his and he's like, I'm not fucking leaving in this $160 mud crab. I'm like, fucking eating every bit of it. Go, if you're not finishing yours, give me yeah, yours, mate. On. I'm going to sit and eat yours. Let's finish using Yoey's and Ashtray. <sighs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna leave it there mate we're done and dusted thank you very much mate um, appreciate your time no worries um number one sports podcast in australia mate so it's about to hold that position after this as well, mate. Uh, back chat double underscore on socials you can send us an email hello at backchatpodcast.com.au join us on patreon for a little bit of an extended jeremy mcgovern chat he's gonna go in a sec but we're gonna have a quick five minute and we might be able to find out some more Scott Lysett uh, mm. stories after this one. Maybe not fit for the rest of us. So VIP Patreons, you can find us over at backchatpodcast.com.au. Thanks to Whippersnapper, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., Leadable Cameras. We'll see you after Christmas. Oh,